Yeah, welcome to the to the year 2021 budget defense on the information section of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture under the headship of Alaji Lai Muhammad. Being the Honorable Minister of Information and Culture, as well as agencies and departments with particular mandate on information. Let me first of all appreciate the Minister of Information and our agencies for their proactive approach to information dissemination during the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. I must say that the approach of Nigeria to greatly stem the tide and as well flood the, the curve of the spread, this was achieved by commitment in spite of the obvious challenges. We will recall that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammadu Buhari, laid the proposals to the Joint Section of the National Assembly on Thursday 8th of October 2020, in obedience to the provisions of the Constitutional Court in Section 81 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as, as amended. Having collected input from various ministries and agencies with a view to give the fiscal policy direction to our dear country for the year 2021. Similarly, the National Assembly, being the largest concentrate of the people's representative, is currently obeying the provisions of the same constitution in section 80 with a view to make people oriented appropriation law that will meet the yearning and expectation of Nigeria in all categories of our respective call to the service of our fatherland, which must be done with due diligence and utmost sincerity of purpose. Since the 2020 fiscal year, the result from paradigm shift from the past attitude of, the, of this national call and in line with the provisions of the Fiscal Responsibility Act, both executive and current National Assembly have breathed a new life into our appropriation process by reverting to the, the budget life back to the January to December cycle. We, on this side of, this, of the divide, believe that this budgetary regime will contribute immensely to the development of our great country in, in implementation, if implementation is done with due diligence. Although in response to my constant, in response to my consistent request, for the better funding of the Ministry of Information and related agencies, there's an improvement in the amount proposed to the to our to our and our agencies in the budgets under consideration when compared with the previous one. Nevertheless, it is pertinent to inform the public that Ministry of Information and its agencies are expected to be on top of their duties in ensuring proper effective and timely dissemination of information as regard government activities to the populace in a manner that conform with the global best practice in terms of modern equipment and train, training. Meanwhile, the lack of enough financial allocation that is seriously hampering their performance still require improvement. As a matter of fact, budget of the information ministry in state like Aquaibon, River State, are far more than what the whole country is proposing for the Federal Ministry of Information, in spite of the very high responsibility that attached their hand. Hence, the need for more and better funding is strongly advocated for us to support the fact that information is power, and as a wise saying goes. To this end, is our belief as people's representative that Nigeria is to be better informed on the activities of government and for this ministry and agency to diligently deliver on their mandates or showcasing of our potentials as agencies to diligently deliver on their mandates and showcasing of the potentials as nation in general and governments undertaking to Nigerians and outside the world is the, in the best content. Every stakeholders in this country must be ready to put their hand on deck to rescue 
them through improved budget, budgetary allocation to bring them back to their right perspective for the benefit of Nigerians and of Nigeria and Nigerians. Because this is the only way we can demystify fake news and hate speech that has come a serious challenge to our unity and coexistence as a nation, as well as smooth management of our security architecture. Of course, the only thing that can neutralize force is the truth. This is the clarion call. Thanks, and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I want to commend the, the chairman for neutralizing the goal I scored when I started. Uh, but more importantly, so I want to thank the chairman for the empathy he has shown for this ministry. If I had written this speech, I couldn't have done better. And actually, this means that we have the legislative arm of government that is not censorial, but rather collaborative with the executive arm of government. I, I'm, I'm glad to hear the chairman not only commend the ministry for the role it played in the, in the uh, advocacy, sensitization, you know, against the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, but uh, also appreciating the fact that even though there is a marginal increase in the allocation to the ministry and its agencies this year, that is a far cry from what it ought to be. And you can see the chairman himself going the extra mile to even give us examples of some states that have budgets that are even bigger. You know, ministries, some state ministry of information having you know, uh, budgets even far bigger than the, that of the federal ministry. And again, uh, you can see that this is a hands-on committee, as, uh, as is uh, been shown by the chairman, that uh, the biggest epidemic, probably worse than the COVID-19, is the fake news epidemic. And uh, soliciting for us on how we can also, uh, you know, combat this particular epidemic. Frankly speaking, Mr. Chairman, honorable members, after your speech, sir, I thought you simply ask us to take a bow and leave because uh, you've said everything we want to see. I, I, I can't thank you enough, sir, for your very kind uh, you know, address. And it gives me confidence and comfort that I'm before a committee that empathizes with the executive of government, with my ministry, and with my Parasita, I thank you very much for that very rousing and encouraging speech. Thank you, sir. Um, yes. See, see, and I, I want to thank the chairman and the entire house also for deferring the defense. I mean, yes, the report of the, the review of the 2020 budget till a later time, and that we should just go straight to business uh, to defend the 2021 budget. Uh, but, of course, the chairman and the House will still want us to uh, do a, uh, to a, a very brief uh, review of uh, how we performed in uh, 2020. So, uh, please, if you don't mind, sir, I will just please uh, uh, ask you to, uh, to go to, no, please, uh, to page, um, page 7, sir very briefly, sir. I think that gives us an overview of um, we have the financial performance of the 2020 budget in brief, sir. Uh, a is the Appropriation Act of 2020 is uh, attached as Appendix 1, but you can see under A, sir, that um, under the 2020 personal emolument cost, the sum of uh, 2 billion 927 million, 523,697 Naira. 
was appropriated for the Ministry of Information and Culture Sectors for the payment of staff salaries and allowances for that year. There's a shortfall in the personnel due to public service wage adjustment. But the budget office will make arrangement to resolve that through the service wide vote. Under overhead, sir, the sum of six hundred and sixteen million one thirty four thousand nine eighty one naira was appropriated for the year, and the sum of four and forty four million forty six thousand six hundred and three was released, representing seventy two percent of the 2020 appropriation. So sir, the table that follows us simply gives the figures I've repeated, saying that percentage release was 72 percent. Then, sir, you can, if you can, out of the total releases of 444,046, so a million forty six thousand total expenditures stood at the sum of four forty four forty three thousand seven eighty six. Analysis of the releases expenditure is what have also is you can see on that uh, table. On capital development fund, Sir Chairman sir, total sum of one billion thirteen thirty million nine forty five thousand seven hundred sixteen that was appropriated for the entire ministry in twenty twenty. The sum of eight hundred and twenty four million seven ninety three thousand five seventy six naira only was appropriated for information sector to undertake nine projects. So Chairman, sir, you can see uh, overpaid, sir, you can, uh, we have uh, a tabulation of performance on capital projects. Sir. On special enlightenment campaign, on government policies and programs, testimonials series, national campaigns, an advocacy against fake news, insecurity, farmers' headers clash, banditry, etc. The sum of one oh five million five oh three thousand was appropriated. One oh five million five oh five seven eighty eight was released. And uh, 104 million 972,116 was committed to date, making 99% performance. Under institutional interaction with stakeholders, i.e., the NUJ, Nawaj, Ratau, Group of editors, bloggers, online publishers, as well as uh, weekly ministerial press, press briefings, the sum of 121 million, 878,900 was released, was appropriated, same was released, and to date we spent 109 million, 800,000. 685 Naira, leaving a balance of only 12 million 78,205 Naira, representing 90% performance. Under the facilitation of ministerial media appearances for 36 ministries, influencers, and um, 
anal analyst on radio, TV, social, and you know, uh, print media. 107 million, 280 was 40,468 was appropriated. The same amount was released. We've so far spent 96 million, 729,000. Two leaving a balance of 10 million, 551,198. Again, another 90% performance. Uh, under number four, sir, which is media intervention on contingency national issues, such as presidential directives, national assembly resolutions, and other MDAs assignments. Uh, the sum of, uh, I think it's 90 million, 129,430 Naira was appropriated. The same was released. And uh, we have so far spent 87,000 million, 264,514 leaving a balance of 2 million, 864,916 naira, making a performance of 97%. Under the nationwide opinion polls, survey of government uh, policies and programs, 58,248,000 naira and 10 naira was appropriated, same was released, so far 47 million, 662,600 Naira has been expended, leaving a balance of 10 million, 586,310 Naira, making 82% performance. Under renovation of Akeva facilities and 37 federal information centers all over the country, 46 million, 370, 9,180 Naira was appropriated. Uh, same was released, and uh, 46 million, 212,758 was expended, leaving a balance of 166,422 Naira, uh, making a performance of 99%. Under scanning and digitization of records, archives into soft copy by use of, um, by using Bookie heavy duty scanners, 12 million, 450,000, naira was appropriated. The entire sum was released. 11 million, 994,200 naira was spent, leaving a balance of 456,690 naira, and that translates to 96% performance. FGN wall calendars and diaries, 32 million was released. It was appropriated at 2,920,000. The entire sum was released, and um, so far, only 385,000 3, has been expended, leaving a balance of 29,070,000. I want to explain here that uh, this is actually a work in progress. Uh, the the um, artworks have been approved. The pictures have been chosen, and I think they are just ready to go for print. That is what explains uh, the poor percentage. I believe very much that uh, within the next month, the, or before December, the calendars will be ready for distribution. Uh, finally, there is the completion of the NTA Gashua substation. 250 million was appropriated. The entire 250 was released, and you can see that it's, it's not like zero percent because this money was, it was released in September, if my records are correct. Uh, we have advertised, we are do, going to do uh, due process, advertisement has gone out. Am I correct, dear DFA? Advertisement has been gone out, so. It's under procurement. Under, so it's under procurement. This is why it appears that we have scored 0%, but it was the money, we could not do the procurement until when the money was released. Um, so Chairman, sir, we can see that uh, um, we have uh, also capital projects that are um, common to both the information and the culture arms of uh, government, installation and training on net voucher software and the completion of networking system, 
thirteen million five seventy six thousand nine eighty naira was uh, appropriated. It's thirteen million five seventy six thousand nine eighty was uh, released, and thirteen million five seventy six five forty five naira has been suspended, leaving a balance of four thirty five percent but we have completed the project 100%. Then there's the monetary and the evaluation of the ministry's project. Uh, 10 million was um, 691,460 was released. The entire, was appropriated, the entire sum was released. We will be able to uh, spend to date only Three million five hundred thousand, leaving a balance of seven million one ninety one thousand four sixty, and because and that's a size three percent for two reasons. During the COVID nineteen, we could not, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of restriction of movement and even personnel on certain level period levels had to stay at home until about last uh, last two weeks. But then it's again a uh, work in progress. Um, of course, there's the, then there's the internal generated revenue. Uh, tender fees is 120 million, so, oh, sorry, 120,800 naira. And that was, has been limited. Rent of fall, 1.650 million, it has been limited. Sales of publication is 2,709,000. That will be limited. Uh, others, such as uh, in refund, is one million seven sixty-two thousand nine seventy-nine naira sixty-three It has also been uh, limited. Fendra tenders journal. Uh, what we have here is nine million. 95,000, which represents 25% that ought to be paid into the uh, TSA, and then the same with the FGP, Federal Government Press, which has also remitted 25% uh, to the TSA of 3,053,000. Eighteen million eight ninety one thousand two hundred eighty eight three naira fifty five kobo. I, I must say that as uh, poultry as it seems is a huge improvement on last year, Mr. Chairman and the honourable members, and will continue to, uh, you know, uh, seal leakages and uh, also uh, expand our aggressive campaign to increase our revenue. Uh, total revenue projection for the Ministry of Formation and Culture in 2021 is uh, what follows. Sir. So, well, as usual, yes, sir, for 2021. So, Mr. Chairman, sir, this is what uh, our review, sir, of our performance in 2020. Thank you very much, sir. I want to say that you are a very lucky minister because from what I'm seeing there, uh, almost all your monies have been given to you. Yes, I haven't said that. I want to say that I'm from Brass by Asa State. But <coughs> considering this paper that I have, I want to come from Gaswa. I don't know where the place is, whether it's in uh, Sokutu or where. But in, in this paper, if you look at uh, page nine, item number nine. Completion of NTA Gaswa substation, 250 million Naira was appropriated for 2020. And you got release of the same amount. Expenditure is zero, except now. I am not 
happy because I said I'm from Gaswana and if money is listed here, you don't do what you're supposed to do there with the money. Do you want to return it back to the federal government? And the percentage of job completed. Because from here, we can still see, um, after the whole money was released, we can still see 97%, 90%. What happened to the other percentage? Why not 100%? So I think it's proper we know the cost of the project. Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The end of the year is already fast approaching December, and you have gotten almost, I think, about 100% releases on this diary and um, calendar. Of course, you know that after December, that diary is no longer needed. So I don't know why you have not spent what has been released, despite the fact that you know that diary will be over by the end of December 31st, 2020. And now you budgeted again for 51 million in 2021. So I, I am worried. I'm worried that that uh, doesn't really add up. Then um, my second question, Mr. Chairman, will be uh, page 30. The information you have for us on page 30 is different from what you have on page 33 and 34. Um, I will need you to reconcile that. Page 30 um, on 2021 budget, um, on number three, you say capital related to information sector, capital related to culture sector. And we must follow due process. So that is the explanation for, for you, sir. Secondly, sir, um, as for the cost of projects, uh, if, if you, uh, our projects, incidentally, sir, in the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture are, 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 are intangible projects. They are not roads or bridges or, 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 or power stations. They are actually intangible projects like, you know, uh, engagement with stakeholders, advocacy, and things like that. And when we, procedure we are using, sir, is against total um, total um, appropriate uh, 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 total appropriation. So it's difficult for us uh, to cost what it will cost us, you know, in the, I mean, and items. I'm have about 30 engagements, uh, you know, during the year, either talking to the Nigerian Union of Journalists or going on a town hall meeting. It's not, it's, we are dealing like this, sir, with the intangible, sir. And then the issue, yes, uh, and uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, we, we, whatever we put here is just uh, what we have. Uh, it, it does not always cover what we want to do, as the chairman rightly, uh, you know, uh, um, observed in his opening address. Uh, in the issue of calendars, sir, so when we do calendars, we do calendar, when we say calendar for 2021, we put it in the budget for 2020. So that will what it would look like. So you are still going to see in our budget for this year, calendar budget is meant for 2022. Uh, and um, like I said again, until we got releases, we could not pick start procurement. But we have said procurement, have approved the artwork, and the next thing we do is that we are just going through the normal advice. But I can assure you by the grace of God, by December, our calendars will be ready. And you actually, we don't have enough money for diaries, so it's actually for calendars alone. Thank you very much. And then there's, um, yes. Then, sir, thank you. And then there's the issue of misinformation and uh, Social, in the social media. Sorry, please. sorry. The, the last question you want to answer, I think, is a very deep question. Which and answer? it's very worrisome. The question. Y asked. Yes, sir. I just want to. And now I want to add something to this. Okay. A soldier is on the gun, I mean, machine gun. Yes, sir. Firing on. So it's like, it's proving to the world that that picture of that machine gun is facing the people at the lucky. But later we get to know that. It's, it's somehow uh, someone just used that pictures to 
mislead the people. Yes, sir. So what are you doing about this? Yes, sir. Before yes, sir. you know that the fake news is absolutely destroying a lot of places. I think you are with us in 2017, Mr. Chairman, sir. In just we saw as far back as 2017 that the next epidemic that will hit Nigeria and the entire world is fake news and misinformation. Based on that, we dedicated an entire National Council on Information meeting in just you remember, sir, to that issue. After which we launched a national campaign against fake news on the 11th of July 2018. And there we said clearly that the next war will be fought without a shot being fired, but it will use fake news. We didn't stop there, Mr. Chair, if you remember, sir. We now went on a tour of all media houses seeking their support for fake news, against fake news. So, Chairman, you remember too, sir, that we launched a campaign to regulate the social media, which was bitterly contested by the stakeholders. But we didn't stop. And we kept saying that if we would not regulate the social media, it would destroy us. Sir, social media and fake news did not start destroying Nigeria. In year 2017, sir, there was a fake video of Hessmen and farmers. This was a video of what happened in Tanzania. It was played on a video as if it was true. 2017, a very popular entertainer in Nigeria raised a false alarm that the students of Gidan Wire, College of Education in Kaduna State, had been murdered. There was almost reprisals, only for it to or to find out that it was not true. Now, you remember too, sir, that in, 20, in 2017, sir, when we were confronting this fake news, we found out that the truth of the matter is that pictures and they're being posted are those of what had happened in mm -hmm. other part of the world. When there, was a when there was a problem, sir, between South Africa and Nigeria, they were posting videos of what happened in India and Tanzania of Nigerians being roasted alive. And that was what led to the reprisal on the malls in uh, Lekki. So and at every point in time, sir, we've been pointing attention of government and policy that this is a menace we must face. It's not limited to Nigeria alone, fortunately. University of, 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 of Ohio, conducted a research that the result was that Hillary Clinton lost to Trump because of fake news, which was promoted by Russia. And they worked on three issues. The first was that Trump had been endorsed by the Pope. The second was that when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State, he authorized the sales of arms to jihadists. And finally, that Hillary Clinton was in very poor health. These three fake news did a lot to depress the vote of Hillary Clinton. So we are sitting on the time on this issue of fake news. Unfortunately, we have no national policy on social media. We need one. Sir, if you go to China, sir, Oh, I'm sorry, sir. If I keep using Mr. Chairman, because you have been long, long, long time pal, sir. We were together in China, sir. We could not get Google, Facebook, or Instagram. You can't even use your, your, your email in China because they make sure that it is censored. It's very regulated. Here, you can get anything. Sir Chairman, honorable members, in um, June this year, there was a riot in Ethiopia when a popular musician was killed. What Ethiopia did to court was to shut down for two days the social media. Bear in mind that Ethiopia hosts AU and United Nations headquarters for Africa. 
But the fact is that the only way to do it is by shutting down, you know, social media. So we need one technology and resources to dominate our own social media and be able to control the technology, have technology to be able to control it, shut it down at will. We need a social media, you know, policy that what do you, what, 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 what can be seen, what cannot be seen. The last NSAS war was fought on social media. They mobilized and submitted news using their phones. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, sir, the world today revolves around two things, smartphone and data. Smartphone. And the young ones we are talking, don't even watch television. They don't listen to radio. They don't read newspapers. And you'll be shocked that if you start arguing with your own daughter or your own son, she will be quoting as a Bible the social media. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, the long and short, sir, is that I've said is that we need a policy on national, a very national policy on social media. We need also to empower the various ministries, the Ministry of Information, on how to deal with social media. And we need technology to be able to shut down at will. Social media will become a menace to the country's uh, security. Draw your attention to page 30. This is where our proposals for the 2021 budget starts. Uh, you can see, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, our personnel cost, our proposal for personnel is four billion. Nine forty-two thousand forty-three naira. Our overhead is nine hundred million five oh seven thousand and six naira. Capital related to information sectors is only one point nine seven seven billion, which is one billion. Nine seventy seven million and six sixty nine naira. The capital return to culture sector is nine forty seven million three seventy nine naira and nineteen three seventy nine thousand and eighteen naira, uh, making a total of uh, three billion forty two. Um, the capital common to both information and culture is 380 million 534,556. So the total proposed for, you can see for personnel is 4 billion, overhead 900 million, Capital related to um, information is 1.7 billion. And capital common to both of us is 380 million. Page 31, which breaks down again to personnel, 4 billion. Which is broken down into see, consolidated allowances, contribution, and etc. But the total for Federal Mission Information and Culture personnel cost is four billion, and the breakdown is as what you have, sir. Thank you, sir. Then page thirty-two, sir. Appendix C. Is a further breakdown for overhead cost. Travel total overhead cost is 900 million, broken into travels and transport general 249 million, utilities 49 million, materials and supplies 66 million. Maintenance and general, maintenance service general 93 million. Consulting and professional services 22 million. 
and that is so so all of it adds up to 900 million and uh, we are going to put 40, 33 now sir apprentice d for the capital sir um special enlightenment campaign on government policies and programs testimony series to gauge impact of government policies etc we are budgeting 336 million 336 million we for media intervention on contingency national issues we are budgeting 295 million. For tour of infrastructural projects to showcase the achievements of the administration, 2168 million. For institutional interaction with stakeholders, we are budgeting such as the Nigerian Union of Journalists, National Association of Women Journalists. Ratao, League of Editors, bloggers, online publishers, newspapers, Professor of Nigeria, as well as ministerial press briefing, we are budgeting, we are proposing 94 million. Facilitation of ministerial appearances for all ministers, influencers, and analysis of radio, television, as well as social media and print media, we are proposing 70 million. Our regular town hall meetings, which we hold all over the country, we are budgeting 174 million. For quarterly interaction with foreign media and PR lobby, we are budgeting at 79 million. For opinion polls, nationwide opinion polls, survey on, survey on government policies and programs, we are budgeting 75 million. For scanning and digitization of records, archives into software, into soft copy by using bouquet heavy duty scanners, we are budgeting 59 million. Rehabilitation of federal government press Lagos, 135 million, we are budgeting. Completion of NTA Gashua. 113 million. Upgrading and renovation of equipments at NTA Mubi, Adamawa State, 17 million. Rehabilitation of office buildings at Radio House and National Press Center, 57 million. Rehabilitation of facilities at the National Institute for Public Information in Kaduna. 83 million. Innovation of archival facilities and 37 federal information centers over the country, 128 million. Production of FGN wall calendars for 2022, 51 million, giving us a total of 1.9. 1 billion 940 million 412,028 naira. Then over which is at page 34, Appendix C. These are projects that are common to both arms of the ministry, that is information and culture. One is the purchase of office furniture and office equipment. We are proposing around 16 million to 44,189. Personnel record and information management system. Manpower development on IPSAS, that international personnel system and account, personnel and accounting system, right? Interna international payroll. International public sector. Sorry, international public sector accounting, accounting system. Uh, 36 million is being budgeted for that. Purchase of operational vehicles, motor vehicles, here we are talking about vehicles that will be mounted 
with the loudspeakers that can continue our advocacies and uh, continue our, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be against COVID, be against any insurgency. We are proposing uh, 162 million. I think we looking at, uh, I think the unit cost about 22 million. Then installation and training on net voucher software and completion of the network system, 32 million. Hosting and management of the ministry's website, 18 million. Monitor and evaluation of the ministry's projects, 14 million. So Chairman, so that in a nutshell is our 2021 project proposal. Before I react uh, to this on a lighter mode, uh, I want to really congratulate you for the budget performance and to ask you a question. Maybe you could be of help to us, honorable members. The magic you use that you get your uh, approval 100% and on time. Because we honorable members up till now, we are yet to get our ZIP. The ones approved is 75%. So that magic, if you can use it, send that gesture for, to us, because our constituents, they are yet to uh, benefit anything this year. The one even approved, we are yet to get it. But I have said that. I'll tell you the magic. Yes. Very simple, sir. <laughs> if your voice is as small as mine, you get everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. OK, now. On page 34, sir, you remember during the uh, last uh, 2020 budget, this uh, subject matter, um, item 7, monitoring and evaluation of ministry project, the 10 million is yet to be spent for this year. You said because of maybe the pandemic or whatever, is, uh, and we are, we are nearing the end of the year. And now we are seeing another 14 million for next year. Why not? Since uh, it's ongoing, and why not use that money for this 2020 for next year? Or just budget for small things instead of 40 million, which is more than even last year, which has not been spent. Okay. You know, you were my leader in Lagos in 1999, and you remain my leader up to now. Uh, I want to talk, ask one question. <laughs> Honorable Minister, you, I, I know you left us, but I know you are still with us in spirit. Thank you. I want to ask one question, sir. There was a time it was proposed that NTA was going to take half a billion dollar loan to improve their services. I want to ask if that is still on, because I didn't see it here. But I just want to make a point that looking at the income of NTA, the ability to pay back half a billion dollar is difficult. I hope we will not end up like Zambia, where China has taken over their television house. Because once that happens, culturally everything we will now be controlled by China. That is one. Secondly, the comment you made about social media, I want to comment briefly, that why social media may be bad, it has done more good than harm. Because sometimes we talk about the evil, evil of social media. We don't talk about the good of social media. There are times communities are fighting, a lot of people are being killed. It could happen for in those days, several days, one month, nobody raises an eye. But now, if anything like that happens, because of social media, immediately government can respond. Talk about uh, the recent looting of uh, various uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, items. In some places, they may be looting, looting shops. Nobody will know. Government will not know. Police will not know. But because of social media, once it's happening, somebody is posting it. And before you know, government is aware, police are aware, soldiers are aware. They will go there and save life and property. They, I can count on and on. There was a time somewhere, some people, uh, boys were digging road. Possibly they are doing it so that they can rob in the night. Because of social media, this information came up immediately and they were apprehended. If there's no social media, government will be wondering this new road we did, what, what spoiled it? So I want, to, I want to appeal that this desire to curb social media, we should not overdo it. Because if we overdo it, it will harm us. Give the example of China, 
It's not a good example. China is a communist country. We know that. Nigeria have always been free. We, we are a democratic country. Let's just look at other democracies and see what they have done with their social media. Now, these technologies are already here, and they are not going to go away. I think we have enough laws in the law book to deal with social media. If people post things that are not correct, they can take them to court. If we think the laws are not enough, bring a bill. Then the National Assembly will look at it and pass it to a law. So this will be able to check people. Because if you don't do that, if you cop social media, what is going to happen is there will be great oppression, democracy will be, will be greatly subdued, and before you know what you try to cure, the harm will be worse than that. I know you are a good man with a good heart, and I know you will not support a thing that will bring uh, dictatorship and the uh, destruction of democracy. Now, what is the government doing about this fake news? You, you, you wasn't around there. What the government doing about the fake news? No doubt about it. The social media, the level of uh, the social media in the Nigeria has come to stay. What the government should do is to look for technology to work together with what is in the space. And nobody saying that as the committee, we are not passing any information out that the government should call or they, they should go and stop the social media. Let, let us be correct. Yes. Unless there's the position of the honorable minister, whether to. <laughs> but the most important thing now, that the government of the day should go and source for the technologies so that you can equally be working within the space of the technology. I mean, the social media are working right now. Side. Yeah. Uh -huh. But there are some vital uh, issues that have been raised. Need push, uh, we need to tackle yes. it before yes. now. Okay. And this is the right time because uh, the minister is here right. and uh, we are at this point of uh, the submission of uh, the, the 2021 budget. Still at this, uh, this fake news that uh, side, uh, side from the whole uh, country. And it hit the point that uh, the technology is one of the problems. So now that uh, we, they are passing their budget, we should let them know because when we are going for oversight, we ask them how they spend their money, and we are also appreciating them here right now that they have done very well. We should also help them to also inculcate all those issues that bother them into 2021 budget. This is the right time for us to do that. We should let them know all those points, not just to like, uh, uh, go through and uh, assess what they are doing alone. We should also help them put what they're supposed to put into the budget so that when it is time, we can stand and ask questions. Start that with page number 33 and 34. So maybe so that we don't have misleading information and numbers. And then we can agree to either accept or reject this document. Uh, Mr. Chairman, number 30. Um, Page 30, sorry, number three. It's a capital related to information sector, 1,977,000,000. Then again, capital common to both information and culture, 380 million and some change. Now, if you go back to page 30, 33, the total amount, this, the subheading of that says projected related to information sector. And if you look at capital related to information sector, you say 1 billion 977. But the total here says 1 billion 940. So I kind of, um, I'm really confused. Then if you look at page 34 as well, the total says 417 uh, million, right? But then in your 2021 on page 30, say com capital common to both information and culture. You say 380. But then on page 34, you say 417 million. I'm confused. We need clarification either to accept or reject this document. Oversee both culture and information. So I make a request that the related budget that has to do with the information should be separated and give it to us. So that the culture also will have their own. So that there won't be uh, struggling to get, oh, this is for the information. No. 
since it's been submitted, but if there's any mistake on the attached paper, okay. that can so be mistake. So they to reject that one. They are to so he will not give the, the correct information. Right. But the, 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 the main budget is very, very correct. National Council on Information and Culture. So that is a project that is common to both information and culture. If you add that 36 million, sir, to the 1.9, Something about we still get the same figure, so there's actually no discrepancy, sir. <coughs> and come again, honourable minister. There is the total three, sir. Thirty-three. Now, can you? The thirty-three, sir, is the figure. That that thirty-three, sir, like I said, is is if you add thirty-six. <laughs> you got it. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> So it's, there's no discrepancy, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. The, then, sir, to go to the other issues raised by the other honorable uh, members, sir. I will start with the honorable member that, is, that spoke about the, uh, no, about the, um, super, the monitoring and the evaluation of projects. Uh, with due respect, sir, most evaluation actually takes place towards the end of the year. Because that is actually where most projects are completed. And we have enough time to monitor and evaluate. So even the money we have now is not enough for the job to be done. So we cannot save it for 2021. Thank you, sir. Then there's the issue of the China loan. I think the China, number one China loan, sir, cannot be on our own budget because it's supposed to be a loan, which I think you, the National Assembly, graciously approved. Now, but the loan from China, if and when it is received, is for the digitization of all NTA stations across the country. And on its own, is going to provide so many jobs. On its own, it's going to raise the revenue capability and capacity of the, of the, of the, of the NT. But more importantly, so that it's going to be a turning point for the creative industry in Nigeria. We have absolutely no fear that that money, if judiciously used, and it will be under my watch by the grace of God, would, there cannot be a problem of not being able to pay back. I think that's all I want to say about the, about the, the loan, sir. Then the issue of social media, honestly, we have spoken to it, sir. Social media has come to stay. We are not complaining about social media. We are complaining about the unbridled, unregulated social media. We are looking at the negative aspect of social media. And it is not just communist countries that are very wary of social media. Even the US. Even the US. And recently, Chad, next door to us here, the replay slowed down the speed of its social media because they, want, they were also worried and concerned about the effect of fake news. So please don't misunderstand us. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to shut down social media. Nobody wants to uh, abolish social media. Because like rightly said, it's the fastest means of, the, of disseminating news. But also the most dangerous means of disseminating fake news, which can be very harmful to any country. No country in the world, sir, leave the social media space so vulnerable as we are doing. That's, our, that's what we're saying, sir. But you cannot have a social media. I, I say, forget government. Government is the least of your problem. Pornography, immoral acts. Many of these children where this somebody is not controlled, you see them early in the morning watching pornographic films. No problem. And the level of incest has gone up all over the country. So it's, it's a serious issue. The, the issue of uh, government is not, is, it's not, it's not uh, the most important. Even human beings, many people have committed suicide because they've been bullied on the social media. This is why no government in the world 
would allow social media unregulated. We know that your ministry is not um, a revenue generating agency, but I believe that you can do better than what I see here. Um, if I am correct, from your 2020 revenue coming from your ministry by the 30th of September 2020, we have 18 million on page 10. 18 million, 891883. Am I correct, Mr. Minister, sir? Yes, sir? And I'm looking at your 2021 projection. I'm even more worried that, um, my concern really is that, um, are you saying that the, the live shows we see on, on NTA, I mean, if, I'm, if I call you, for instance, to come and take a three hour with me, um, am, am I not going to pay like uh, some, some reasonable money for NTA? Because um, I, want to, I want to assume that, I, I think I found out from somebody that a live program of like three NTA live program or maybe live coverage, live coverage I mean, is it not, NTA is a separate agency. Okay, uh, Honorable Minister, is NTA under you or not? Excuse me, I know, even if it is, because I have started, I want to be enlightened. Is NTA under your ministry, sir? Oh, okay. Um, I step it down. I step it down. I'll, I'll keep it to that. Thank you. Committee members, we appreciate you. And uh, as part of our discussion today, I think you are the representative of the executive here in our midst today. Take the executive up on what to do on Ministry of Information. Let them see reasons why more information needs to be released so that you can be working with the power of other information ministries in the whole world. Thank you. Why, on this why, why, why more money should be released, sir? Yes. Why more money should be uh, allocated? Information. Thank you, sir. Yeah, allocated to the Minister of Information. On this note, with the, the approval of my colleagues, I want to adjourn this meeting, Sinadai. Uh, no, no, no. So the minister will be released to go. And uh, the, the agent, this four agency will wait behind so that we can take them. The Upcon, NBC, uh, NFC, NOA, and NPC. Thank you, Honorable Minister. You are discharged to go, please.